Hi, I'm Michael Odie, and I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tekka Inc. And today we're going to talk about using SQL Server Express as a production database. So in this presentation, we're going to look at the different editions of SQL Server 2014 Express. Uh, we'll have a look at the three main editions. All of these can be used for production database uses, and we'll talk about the differences between them. Next, we'll cover a few myths and misperceptions about SQL Server 2014 Express. Why some people think it can't be used in a production setting, or some of the things that uh, stop it from being used. And then we'll cover some limitations, uh, things that you actually have to be aware of if you're going to start implementing SQL Server 2014 Express in a production setting. There are a few gotchas. Uh, they are not showstoppers, but they are important to know about. So with the different editions of 2014 Express, these are all free. They can all be used in production workloads. There are both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of all of these different editions. Uh, the three main editions that you would look at using if you are building a production database are the SQL Server 2014 Express Edition, or 2014 Express with Tools, or 2014 Express with Advanced Services. Um, there is also the local DB edition, but that is primarily a development database. It is not really meant to be used in a multi-user situation. It's more meant to test your T-SQL statements and other things to make sure that everything works. Uh, it is not really meant to be used by multi-users. It doesn't run as a service like these others. Instead, it runs as a local user uh, application. So it is, it's really a development kind of tool. Uh, the main differences between these other tools or editions, though, is that 2014 Express is the database only. It just contains the relational database. It can be used um, with replication as well. Uh, 2014 Express with Tools comes with SQL Server Management Studio. So if you're developing applications, building your database, then 2014 Express with Tools is a good addition to have because you have those building tools like a uh, a query analyzer and a SQL Server Object Explorer and those sorts of things. And then SQL Server 2014 Express with Advanced Services, it is also a, a development kind of tool that can be used. It includes reporting services, so it allows you to easily incorporate uh, nice looking graphical reports into your application, so reporting services allows that. So what are some of the myths about SQL Server Express? Well, first, uh, there's a, a thought that it can't be used for production work, that it's not licensed in this fashion, and that is absolutely not true. Uh, SQL Server Express can be used for production databases. Uh, many independent software vendors incorporate it into their applications as a built-in database that allows you to connect to it. It is completely free. It can definitely be used for production workloads. And there's another thought, there's a limit to the number of connections that it can support. And that is not the case either. That used to be the old case with the older MSDE database, which had a resource governor, which tended to uh, throttle it back when uh, it had, um, I forget the actual number of connections, but I think it was multi-user connections. The more it had, the slower it tended to get. That is definitely not the case with SQL Server Express. There is no limit on the number of connections. It supports the same number of connections that SQL Server does, which is in the 65,000 something. So there is no limit on the number of connections. Um, then there's the thought that databases are limited to four gigabytes. That used to be true back in the SQL Server 2008 days, but with 2008 R2, they lifted that limit to 10 gigabytes, so that's 10 gigabytes per database, and that does not include uh, file stream data types, if you happen to be using that. So there is not a four gigabyte limit there at all. And next, there's the thought that maybe you can't upgrade this to one of the more full-featured editions. If you start with it, you're stuck with it. That is not the case either. You can upgrade from SQL Server Express to any of the other fuller editions, including Standard, Business Intelligence, and the Enterprise Edition. So what are some of the important limitations? Well, first, it is limited to the lesser of one socket or four cores on your system. So there is a computational limit that keeps it um, Eared, geared and designed to address smaller database implementations. Uh, the buffer cache is limited to using one gigabyte. Again, uh, throttling back the, the number of uh, connections and the workload that you can have, but not doing so in any artificial way, just doing so in a way of limitations for the buffer cache and the, utter, and the upper compute power.
And then there is a limit of 10 gigabytes per database, and this is per database file, but it is important you can have multiples of those. So you can have multiple 10 gigabit databases with SQL Server Express. It's not an overall limit. And finally, an important consideration is that there is no SQL Server agent. So unlike the standard edition or the enterprise edition, you can't schedule jobs to run, you can't schedule backups or maintenance plans to run with uh, SQL Server Express. You have to find a workaround for those. So now that we've talked about some of the limitations, let's look at downloading and installing SQL Server Express and getting it running. Okay, now that we've had a quick overview of um, SQL Server Express, let's go actually download and install it. So when we go to download SQL Server Express, we're at the, the Microsoft download sites and it asks for SQL Server Express. You may remember there are several editions of it to download out here. So first, let's select our language and um, for in this case it'll be English and then we'll say download and here you can see this is where we get to select from the different editions uh, SQL Express 32 this is the database engine only so this does not have any of the tools with it um, and you can see there is a 32-bit and 64-bit versions of it and then as you go down to SQL Express Advanced uh, this is where you'll have reporting services uh, included with it and in this case again we have 32-bit and 64-bit versions and then SQL Express WT that's with tools that is the one that comes with SQL Server uh, Management Studio and so let's go ahead and get that one and of course we can also download the local DB uh, database which could be used for development but in this case we're looking at uh, SQL Express as a production database so let's go ahead and download the one where we have Express and tools so we've selected that and now let's just go ahead and hit next and our download will commence so it'll take us uh, a little while to get this going so we'll allow pop-ups and then we'll save this so at this point it's going to go ahead and put this in our downloads folder. So let's wait for a second while the download is happening. At this point, the download has gone ahead and completed. So let's go ahead and we'll open up our downloads folder. And there it is. So let's just go ahead and do the install from there. So we'll hit run. And then we'll step through the SQL Server Express installation. So it's gone ahead and first it's extracting all the different files. We'll wait while it does this for a second. It doesn't take it too long to finish the extraction, and then we'll begin the installation process. So when the extraction is completed, uh, it fires off the SQL Server Installation Center automatically. So let's go ahead and take the option to install a new SQL Server standalone installation with uh, SQL Server Express with tools. This installation process is uh, very much like you'd have with uh, the regular SQL Server standard business intelligence or enterprise editions. It runs through the SQL Server uh, installation center, does a number of checks as it goes ahead and uh, lets you go ahead and install the product. So let's go ahead and start this and we will go ahead and accept the license terms, click next. It checks the setup to files, product updates, and now it's going ahead and installing the setup files takes it just a minute. Then it asks us what features we want to install for our feature selection. Uh, we'll go ahead and select database engine services. Don't really need replication in this, in this case. We will go ahead and install the client tools as well as SQL Server Management Studio which is management tools. So we'll make those selections and go ahead and click next. Then it will go ahead and check the feature rules and make sure that we have everything required on this system to go ahead and perform the setup. In this case, everything is all right, and now it's going to ask us what uh, instance we're going to use to name this, and the default is SQL Express. We'll go ahead and keep that instance ID, select Next. Here it's giving us the account names that we're going to log in with, and we're going to go ahead and just use their defaults to make things easier. So it's going to log in under the NT service, MS SQL Server, SQL Express account and then the browser will be under the local system account. Let's go ahead and click Next and then we'll go ahead and uh, select the authentication method and we'll start off with mixed mode which will give us an SA password. So let's enter a password for our SA account and we'll make sure it's a relatively strong password so that it will pass password complexity rules. Um, we are going to go ahead and add the current user as a SQL Server administrator and 
if we were doing this um, in a production environment, we would almost certainly go over here to data directories and we would split out our, our database files, our log files, and our tempdb files uh, to different drives in the back end. Uh, preferably the, the log files in tempdb would go to drives that had high write performance. In this case, uh, just to keep things simple, we'll just go with the defaults. We'll go ahead and select next and then it will begin the, the installation process. So at this point, it's going ahead and installing uh, SQL Server Express for us. Uh, this will take just a couple minutes, so we'll check back in in just a little bit. You can see that our installation is, is continuing to progress. Again, this will take it um, about five or six minutes to complete. So I'll just come back in just a sec. And here you can see the, the installation has completed, and it's gone ahead and put in management tools, the client tools, and of course the database engine services. So let's go ahead and close this up. And next we're going to go ahead and uh, start SQL Server Management Studio. And so here's SQL Server Management Studio. You can tell it's connected into our named instance of SQL Express right up there. And since we've just done the install, there are no databases. But managing this is very much like managing a SQL Server Standard or SQL Server Enterprise Edition. And the next step would be to just go ahead and add our user databases. And we could manage them through a SQL Server Management Studio just like we could a, a normal installation. And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.